In for Wolf, you can't run Sash on Pelipper, may as well give yourself an option for Trick Room. And it has wide guard, so it could be very important into something like the Glacial Lands yeah. from an Ice Rider Calyrex. So we'll see how Jody decides to position it, as right now it's not on the field. Jody is going to lead with the Iron Hands and the Amoongus, and for Wolf it will be the Shadow Rider Calyrex and Incineroar. I think it's a, a positive lead here for Wolf in this case. You have the faster fake out in the form of Incineroar. And of course, your Calyrex cannot be faked out as it is a ghost type. So if you do opt to go for a fake out on either slot, and Nasty Plot's actually a really strong option right here. Of course, Wolf's Incineroar is holding the safety goggles, but it is also not running Taunt, a move that we see on a lot of Incineroar lately. But so far on stream, not many players have opted to go for. No, but it has something more important in this matchup, and that's the helping hand. Yeah. One of the newer techs that Incineroar gets a chance to have now in this generation, and it'll be really beneficial later after this nasty plot goes up. It will be able to get that plus two special attack as the flinch goes into the iron hands, mm. but the spore leaves this Calyrex vulnerable to taking this spore from that Amoongus. Jody calls Wolf's bluff there. I think Wolf was trying to catch Jody, maybe swapping out the Amoongus, uh, maybe trying to capitalize on what's a fake out. Oh, it's actually Covert Cloak Amoongus. Yeah, you can't That's fake it out. Miss that. Yeah. yeah, you can't fake it out at all. You have to take that spore there. So faking out the, the Iron Hands there means that no damage comes through. You do have to take the spore, but a minus one uh, Iron Hands won't be doing too much, especially because you can just parting shot at this turn if you want. You can get that nasty plot off and make sure that once you do wake up, you are no longer, like you're going to be able to do a whole lot of damage with those astral barrages. And otherwise, this Amoongus also isn't doing a whole lot either. Right. Uh, it does have Protect, so this Amoongus at least has a lot of staying power, but you're not threatening a whole lot of damage with something like the Pollen Puff into the Shadow Rider Calyrex. So Calyrex is going to take its mandatory turn of sleep heading into this next turn, and we will see the Parting Shot into this Amoongus anyway, just to be able to allow this Incineroar to actually get something else onto the field. So we'll get a good look at what Wolf has opted to bring for this game number one. It's going to be the Rillaboom and the Pelipper. I like the Rillaboom here a lot. You know, if you are Jody, I think Parting Shot is kind of the most obvious play to come out from that instant roar. So you could possibly try and spore that slot to catch whatever switches in. But Rillaboom, being a grass type, is immune to spore. And you also give yourself the option to go for another fake out on this next Ooh. turn, buy another turn for this Calyrex while it tries to wake up. Yeah, and it. That Volt Switch, like, tickled yeah. the Rillaboom. It really didn't do very much damage at all. So no. feels good to be able to have that Rillaboom come in to eat that Switch out. And now the Calyrex Ice Rider finally makes an appearance. So we're off to the races here between these two horses. The race should be won by Wolf, unless Trick Room does go up. We did see the Pelipper in the back for Wolf as well. So if Trick Room goes up, we have that Room Service Pelipper ready to come in and be a nuisance for Jody's team. Depending on how the Pelipper is trained at minus one speed, it probably acts before something like that Iron Hands. Maybe not Amoongus, because Amoongus is very, very slow. It's a slow little mushroom, but Rillaboom here, able to go for a fake out and buy a turn for this Calyrex. Because like you mentioned, Rosemary, this Amoongus is not threatening any damage at all into the Clover Cloak, uh, oh, what's it called? Calyrex on Wolf's side of the field. Yeah. Well, at the very least, too, uh, you're going to get maybe a potentially free turn here. Uh, this Ice Rider Calyrex is going to go for a Protect, so it blocks the fake out from this Rillaboom. But this Amoongus uh, is still going to be left vulnerable on the field, but the Calyrex for Wolf takes another turn of sleep. So heading into the next turn, does have an opportunity and a higher chance of waking up. I think we need a counter on screen of how many times someone spores something that's already asleep on stream. Yeah, I think <laughs> actually it's going to be a lot. Really smart play from Jody there, though. I think, like, best case, the Calyrex actually wakes up tries to go for Astral Barrage as you protect, and you're able to put it back to sleep and guarantee that this Glacial Lance, or the, the Calyrex Ice Rider on Jody's side of the field is able to go for something like a big Glacial Lance without fearing a wake up from the Calyrex Shadow Rider. But now it's a 50-50. Does the Calyrex Shadow Rider wake up on this turn and fire off a huge Astral Barrage, or does it stay asleep? Well, the first thing we'll see is this terrestrialization to a fire type from this Ice Rider Calyrex. And it's going it to help to maybe potentially eat something from this uh, Shadow Rider Calyrex because it does wake up, gets the Astro Barrage into both targets, and oh, take gosh. a look at how much damage it's going to do at plus two. Oh. At, ooh, this Amoongus, though, it doesn't actually get knocked out as the U-turn heads into that slot. It's going to allow this Rillaboom to pivot out, and this Incineroar gets a chance to come back in. But this clear amulet on this Ice Rider Calyrex will block the Intimidate. 
It blocks the Intimidate, and that's a really, really big Terrestrialization as well. Even if the Rillaboom had targeted that slot, it would have been able to st survive any attack coming up from that Rillaboom, as it only had Grass and Bug-type moves, which would be resisted. And now Calyrex has the option to go for this Trick Room, ensure that the Calyrex on Wolf's side of the field will be acting last. And now that the Amoongus and Ice Rider Calyrex are on the field, they should be acting first against everything except possibly this Room Service Pelipper. If we actually see it uh, hit right. the field at this point, but uh, really interesting here that we are going to just end up kind of, I think you can think about this a little bit. I, I like the fake out opportunity here from the Incineroar specifically because you at least deny one turn of Trick Room right. here from either the Calyrex or the Amoongus. But on the other hand, you know that this Incineroar is going to be moving after this Calyrex and Amoongus actually take their turns. The, the nice thing about here being the Terra Water Shadow Rider is that you were resisting Glacial Lance. Yeah. Like that's something that is a really cool tech on these Shadow Rider teams that maybe struggle with the Ice Rider Calyrex on the other side of the field because it does have that very strong Glacial Lance, but being resisted, you're taking much less damage and you're buying yourself even more time to stick around while this Trick Room is up. But that Pollen Puff, that Ice Rider Calyrex is able to heal off so much of the damage that it already took from that Astral Barrage earlier. But that Water Tire Terror type really paying off in spades. It took maybe about a fifth of its HP from that attack. And this Incineroar also gets a chance to actually use that Parting Shot as well. Can only go for the Amoongus because of that clear amulet. But you get a chance to re-pivot in either maybe this Pelipper or this Rillaboom is not so bad either, knowing that you do have Fake Out. I really like this Rillaboom swap because of that Fake Out. You're buying your own Shadow Rider Calyrex so much more time with the possibility of going for a Fake Out and waking up on this turn, even possibly waking up the following turn and going for Protect to keep it safe from one more Glacial Lance. But the Water Terra coming in very handy there, making sure Calyrex is still very healthy. Of course, Amoongus threatens uh, still very little damage. It's not known for dealing damage with Pollen Puff. And now if Calyrex wants to significantly damage the Shadow Rider on Wolf's side of the field, it has to go for a high horsepower, which means it's not getting damage into two slots at once. And that's really where you see the power of these Calyrex come through is those 100% accurate major spread damage attacks yeah. from either side. But neither of these Calyrex have been able to secure knockout. So we are missing a little bit of that snowball potential of being able to have that Chilling May or the Shadow Rider ability get boosted. Uh, Grim Nay, I remembered now. There we go. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it's either Grim or it's Chilling. Yes. But <laughs> this Amoongus is sure not going to be being Chilling on the field. <laughs> so we've got the Iron Hands instead going to take its place as yet another pivot comes through. But it's, it's about the waiting game. Can the Shadow Rider Calyrex actually wake up on this turn? it's going to, at the very least, be able to survive another one of these Glacial Lances. Glacial Lance does come through. We'll not do too much damage to either of these two Pokemon, thanks to their typing resisting it, but Calyrex does wake up. It is able to fire off one more Astral Barrage, that plus two special attack. This will do a big chunk of damage to both Pokemon on Jody's side of the field. Not enough for a knockout, but certainly one more attack, one more Astral Barrage will do the trick on either side. Yeah, I mean, take a look at how much that Iron Hands took, even yeah. with the Assault Vest. I know. That's the power of the plus two on that Astral Barrage, for sure. But the grassy terrain has expired. Maybe a little less healing going across the board, but Wolf has always been so good at being able to call out the termination of those terrains or field effects to get the Rillaboom back in to set it back up. And the nice part about this too is Wolf has two fake out users. He, even though one is locked on the field and can't fake out this turn, he can very easily protect the Calyrex, swap into Rillaboom, and if it gets knocked out by something like a Glacial Lance on this turn, you can very easily just bring the Incineroar back in, enable your fake out on the following turn to try and stall this Trick Room. I think at this point, if Trick Room ends and Calyrex is awake, the Shadow Rider Calyrex rather is awake, Wolf is in a very, very strong spot. Absolutely, because your Shadow Rider from Calyrex is going to be the best thing on the field. And with only one fake out option here from the Iron Hand so far, uh, you need another turn to potentially get something like an Incineroar in to do the exact same. But the high oh. horsepower onto the Rillaboom, that's got to hurt. You wanted a much different target with that high horsepower, not this Rillaboom. Yeah, that is not the play you wanted to see if you are Jody, unfortunately. That Ice Rider does no damage to Rillaboom at all. And now with Fake Out active, Wolf has the option to just go for a Fake Out into Iron Hands, block any super effective damage from Wild Charge, and possibly get two KOs here with Astral Barrage. It's gonna force his Calyrex to protect. It actually doesn't want to get knocked out on this turn, knowing that it's also not gonna be able to do enough damage to the Shadow Rider of Calyrex, especially with that Water Terra. So the Astral Barrage, 
At least this Ice Rider Calyrex is safe from that, but this Iron Hands sure is not. We saw how much damage it just <laughs> took, and another one will do the job. Now we've got a Grimnay boost. Now this horse is really feeling itself. We sure do. It is a plus three Shadow Rider Calyrex. That is a very, very scary horse. But you have to wonder, we have not seen Jody's fourth Pokemon. Do you think it could be that Ditto? If Iron Hands is knocked out, Trick Room has ended. If Ditto comes into that slot, it will copy the Shadow Rider across it from is. it. Get a plus three special attack, Choice Scarf, Shadow Rider, Calyrex. The Trick wow. Room ending was good for Wolf until this happened right here, Rosemary. Yes, it sure is. <laughs> that Ditto has both of these abilities, all of the boost to that special attack, and the speed. Very, very important here. This ditto also pretty tanky. I don't think that a grassy glide would be enough to knock out this ditto either, even though you have that priority option on the table. You do, and the other thing too is we've seen Wolf's fourth Pokemon be that Pelipper. If Jody locks into the Choice Scarf Astral Barrage here, Wolf can pretty easily maybe sacrifice this Rillaboom to that Astral Barrage, maybe tank it and get a U-turn off, but bring in Pelipper and lock out the Shadow Rider Calyrex ditto form on Jody's side of the field <laughs> from using Astral Barrage. Well, the Astral Barrage, it's about to let it rip. This Rillaboom, even though it has this Assault Vest and it's not taking too much damage, I don't know how well and comfortable it's going to be able no, to take this. It, survives. it does. It does survive. Good knowledge for Wolf to have. As a U turn, actually does a pretty good chunk back to this Ditto Rider Calyrex. Ditto <laughs> Rider? <laughs> we, get the, we get something else pivoted in. Pelipper, I think, would be a great pivot here if Trick Room does go up. Uh, even though this, this Calyrex Shadow Rider on Jody's side of the field with that Choice Scarf is going to be very, very fast, it means you do have the option to attack first with your own Ice Rider. You have a really, really nice like speed sandwich here, is kind of what players like to call it, where you have something very fast and very slow to take advantage of both Trick Room being up and not being up at the same time. The Pelipper comes in, Glacial Lance is actually the move of choice, so no Trick Room going up. And now that Pelipper is threatening wide guards, this is actually a very strong position for Wolf now. It is. Oh, oh. but the critical hit! Oh my. <laughs> wow, the Pelipper, it's barely able to hang on through that. Wow. <laughs> Even though that was going to be neutral damage. Anyway, that critical hit is yeah. very important. If that if that had actually knocked out Pelipper, I think Jody just wins the game instantly. Yeah. Like, white guard is gone, and you have nothing that can stop this ditto. It is a ghost type. You can't fake it out. Uh, and it is going to be the fastest thing on the field with a plus three Astral Barrage. But now Wolf is in such a strong position. The Calyrex on Jody's side, the Shadow Rider rather, there's two Calyrex, so he's got to specify. Uh, the Shadow Rider that has been copied into by this Ditto cannot go for Astral Barrage anymore because Jody can just block it with Wide Guard. It is Choice Scarf locked into it, so you cannot change your moves. And of course, if you have your own Astral Barrage threatening with some very strong plus three attacks, there's not a whole lot Jody can do here anymore. No, but a big protect here from Jody. It's going to help make sure this Ice Rider Calyrex does stay safe. But the wide guard coming through would have blocked anything coming through from the oh. Astro Barrage and Glacial Lance, but it was the Terra Blast into that Ice Rider Calyrex that Wolf was really hoping to pin down and knock out with a move like that. So a great protect coming through from Jody. That's also actually a really, really smart play on Wolf's end there. If you're a Wolf and you go for that Astral Barrage, the Amoongus comes in and gets knocked out, and Jody gets a free swap back into the Ditto, which will copy, again, the Calyrex Shadow Rider, a plus three special attack. Plus and have four. the option. Right, actually, it plus would be four. Plus we get the boost. But at the same time, you have the option to lock in, not to Astral Barrage, which can be blocked by Terra Blast, or by Wide Guard, but to Terra Blast of your own, which is normal type, because he has not Terrastalized, and will actually be able to hit the Trader Rider on Wolfson because it did Terrastalize. So not knocking out Amoongus there, incredibly smart. And that's actually, it's, it's still like a no-risk play because the Wide Guard means the Shadow Rider on Jody's side could not do damage at all. Yeah, absolutely. Big brain play there. A double protect, though, trying to go through so that you could see that play out in real time. Yeah. But instead, Dead. It fails. It's a double knockout onto this Amoongus and this Ice Rider Calyrex. And so it all comes down to just the Ditto left, which unfortunately in the face of this Rillaboom uh, would take a, like a good chunk of damage. But maybe, maybe if maybe you get the plus four now, plus five, actually. <laughs> Is it five? I don't, it's a lot. Okay, plus a lot. Let's yeah. go with that. 
it's it's kind of the same risk though. Like the Pelipper switching out, switching out from Wolf is very very smart here because now Jody like has to lock into Terra Blast, right? You just you can't lock yourself into Astral Barrage anymore because you will be locked out by that Ditto's wide guard, by the Pelipper's wide guard. And now that you're only locked into these single type, single target moves, I think Wolf has the space to bring in something else uh, and be able to take these knockouts. If you don't knock out the Calyrex on Wolf's side, obviously it just knocks you out with Astral Barrage. But if you do knock it out and you have like the Rillaboom on that side to threaten Wood Hammers and Cinderella can come in and knock off, so many options here for Wolf. There are, but there is a world where Jody gets back into this, but it started with knocking out this Rillaboom instead. If right. you Terra Blast into that slot, then you are able to get this knockout onto the Rillaboom, and maybe you're able to get the knockout onto the Pelipper and this Incineroar. Because the Pelipper is is a very small sliver of HP. So it would have been able right. to go down to a Terra Blast for sure. I think this actually is kind of a 100% win chance for Wolf, though, this play. By protecting and U-turning here, you're guaranteeing that you can bring an Incineroar on this turn. And now that you have the Shadow Rider Calyrex of your own, plus the knockoff threatening Jody's Ditto Rider Calyrex, <laughs> uh, those are two moves that will knock it out cleanly. And since you saw it lock into Terra Blast, there's only single target damage coming out from Jody's Ditto, which means that now Wolf will have the option to KO with either the Incineroar or the Calyrex, and obviously Jody cannot KO them both at the same time. Absolutely. So well played by both of them. Jody had such but so, so much patience when it came down to actually getting this ditto on the field yeah. to take advantage of all of the boosts that Wolf had set up for himself. Uh, I love that. It's like yoink, that's fine instead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It is, it, he had great patience waiting until a good chance to bring this Ditto in, but Wolf had even better patience not revealing that Pelipper. I think when, when Jody brought that Ditto in, there was no knowledge that Pelipper was the fourth Pokemon there. And maybe knowing how these matchups play out, you can assume that it was probably there, but at oh! the same time, it wasn't enough. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, that's a lot. It's just, you don't expect <laughs> to see that from a, like right. a normal Theraflas onto a, a water Terra type. Right. This is not every day you get a chance to see a move like that, but you were right about the 100% lock. You just go down to the Terra Blast, and you get to get the knockoff and get the KO. It's PP of every attack. So if, if that does could possibly come to play later, that could be relevant. Not seeing it just yet, though, we have the Shadow Rider, Calyrex, and Pelipper on Wolf's side of the field oh. facing down Amoongus and the single strike Urshifu for Jody. Okay, so it's going to start to rain a little bit in yeah. sunny New Orleans, <laughs> but this Shadow Order Calyrex, I, how are you feeling about what it's seeing right now? Because I think if I were it, I don't want to see that Urshifu that you have Sucker Punch pressure. Sucker Punch or Wicked Blow, not things this Calyrex wants to face down at all. Again, it is double weak to those dark type attacks, being a ghost and psychic type itself. We have some defensive options there for Wolf, and the Pelipper does threaten some big damage with a Hurricane, but this Amoongus is there to protect the Urshifu on Jody's side of the field, possibly able to survive one Hurricane itself based on how both of these Pokemon are trained, uh, but it looks like Wolf might actually just be leaving this Calyrex well, in. Okay, I mean, you use the Terrestrialization here, Maybe something that Jody might not be expecting because that terrestrialization at the very least does remove all of those weaknesses that you have to the Sucker Punch as well as that Wicked Blow. So it could survive a hit or maybe you're just calling that it's actually not going to be a big attack heading in that direction. As this Urshifu, it's actually not going to take a whole lot of damage but neither is the Amoongus as the Wicked Blow in response is only going to do about two thirds. But the Hurricane actually avoids the Urshifu, heads for the Amoongus instead and that is going to be the first knockout of this game number two that Amoongus now down. Big KO there for Wolf. Amoongus going down means that there's no more threat of Spore. I really like that terrestrialization play because it did allow you to go for that big Astral Barrage. Not only do you get some good damage on Amoongus, but you've now broken the Focus Sash on the Urshifu on Jody's side of the field, which means that one more big hit will be able to knock it out. Ditto comes straight in though, will be threatening uh, some big Astral Barrages of its own. But of course, knowing that the uh, Calyrex did not get the KO, but Pelipper did instead. It is not boosted. There's no been nasty plots. It's a neutral Calyrex Shadow Rider for Jody, which is a little bit less scary if you're Wolf release. Yeah, you do have to consider, though, that this Pelipper does have Wide Guard. So this yeah. Ditto, is it safe to just go for an Astral Barrage? But we saw, a, well, I guess it's hard to tell given that the 
Galarix also got hit by like a plus five yeah. Terra Blast. <laughs> so I'm not even going to try to do the math on that one. Right. But that is something that Jody has to think about, is there could be a Frigga in the back to block something like a Sucker Punch. So it's not easy to just pick up the Calyrex before it attacks. And it's ditto. It's not safe to just go for an Astral Barrage. It's not. The White Guard could possibly ruin that game plan. But if the Pelper does go for White Guard, that means it's not Hurricaning, which means that your own Urshifu is pretty safe. So that might be kind of a trade you're willing to make if you're Jody. That is something that you have to do. Sort of force the Pelipper to either use the Wide Guard or just try to play around it and just do damage regardless. But it does go for <laughs> a Terra. This is so funny. <laughs> yeah, Terra goes Terra Blast with the Terra from this Ditto. And that Pelipper still oh, wait, hanging Astro around. Barrage. Oh, that's a huge play. Astro Barrage comes through here. Because Ditto Terrestrial is into a Ghost, it looks like it knocked out. The Ditto has gone down, and now Astro, the Calyrex on Wolf's side is up to plus one special attack from the Grim Nay boost. And Urshifu can only take one knockout here. If it tries to knock out the Calyrex on Wolf's side, then the Pelican will be able to hurricane it for another KO. Yeah, this is actually huge. It does go for the Wicked Blow into the Pelipper, though, to at least be able to finish up the job there. And maybe now it is going to be in Sucker Punch range, and Jody just has to try to make that call. The problem, though, is that Wolf has two Pokemon in the back that are threatening Fake Out. They can just block it before it gets a chance to move. And Sucker Punch doesn't benefit from the guaranteed critical hit that Wicked Blow does. So instead of coming in here, we'll put Urshifu at minus one attack for the rest of this game. And unfortunately for this Ice Rider Calyrex, it can no longer terastalize because Jody opted to terastalize that Ditto on the prior turn. A plus one Astral Barrage would probably just knock out this Calyrex right away. And because you have the Fake Out option on the Incineroar, and of course the Intimidate to mitigate the Sucker Punch damage, this game just might be over, Rosemary. Yes, I think that last turn sealed the deal here for Wolf in this series. And we are just moments away from being able to confirm the victory here for Wolf. Jody still has the horse in this race, but you know, it's going to be so hard to actually set up the trick room. And even if you do, you have to deal with this Water Terra Shadow Rider Calyrex. You and do. even everything else that you could throw yeah. at it. Wolf does still have the Incineroar and the Rillaboom at his disposal alongside this Calyrex. Urshifu opts to protect itself with the Detect on this turn, not wanting to get faked out as Calyrex on Wolf's side goes straight for the plus one Astral Barrage. If this KOs the Calyrex on Jody's side of the field, this game is all but over. He seems to know. He's nodding in oh. the profile. That is a super effective one-hit knockout. And with just as Urshifu left, it is going to be so difficult for Jody to find the win condition here because yeah. it is slim to none. Wolf, what a phenomenal play just to try to play around some of the fears that are on his team sheet. The threat yeah. of the Ferrigoroth, the threat of the wide guard. The ditto. The ditto. Like, that, that was a very scary thing on Jody's side too, but Wolf was able to handle that very, very well. Super well. It's not over for either of no. these trainers either. You still have their second